Elon Musk is probably one of the most influential entrepreneurs and innovators right now. But how does Elon Musk innovate? I think Elon's innovation scheme, so to say, basically consists of four interrelated parts. Unmet needs, a perspective shift, perfect timing, and a vision. Okay, let's explain each of these by looking at Elon's newest project, the Tunnel Boring Company. At first, it looked like Elon was just frustrated about traffic congestion on his way to work and simply decided to solve this whole problem while tweeting about it, which honestly might also be true. However, there is much more to it because this project follows the same patterns as his other ventures. It all starts with an unmet need. Traffic congestion frustrates us all over the world. Nobody ever said, wow, I'm glad I just stuck in traffic. No, everyone really wants to spend as little time in traffic as possible. And traffic congestion is a serious health problem. It leads to an increased amount of stress, decreased social interaction, and to a range of negative health effects. One major problem here is that traffic congestion is increasing air pollution, which is now considered the fourth largest global health concern, killing 6.5 million people every year. In Beijing, when pollution levels are at their highest, Briefing for a day is literally as unhealthy as smoking 40 cigarettes. And congestion also costs a lot of money, of course. According to mobility company Inrix, congestion cost US drivers nearly 300 billion in 2016, an average of 1,400 US dollars per driver. So yes, traffic congestion is a serious problem and many cities and people around the world would greatly appreciate a solution. But why haven't we found a solution yet? This is exactly the question that leads us to the second part of Elon's innovation scheme, perspective shift. Several people have written about how Elon approaches problems by boiling them down to their basics or fundamental truths, a way of thinking influenced by physics. Similar concepts are also found in epistemological philosophy and in the study of heuristics. Tim Urban from Wait But Why did a piece on this, explaining Elon's approach by using the analogy to computers. Imagine our brain being the computer hardware, and the software running on these brains, the thought patterns, the belief systems, and the reasoning methods we use, influenced, of course, by our individual experience of life and reality, but most importantly, also influenced by the social systems around us. Basically, any information from the outside world gets filtered and assessed by our own software. So I think the first principle approach is kind of a way of trying to access reality, to reason, without falling victim to one's software or mainstream belief systems, at least as best as that is even possible. In that way, Elon kind of deconstructs knowledge. So coming back to our example, we could approach the problem of congestion by looking at existing countermeasures, picking the best out and, for example, analyzing how new technologies and behaviors could improve these measures. However, with these approaches, we would either be very susceptible to fall victim to our software or even confirm belief systems and mental models. With first principle thinking, we approach the problem in a completely different way. First, we look at the fundamental physics of how people move. As it turns out, we mostly move in a 2D transport network. It is really only when we go on a flight, take an elevator, or use the subway that we step out from 2D into a 3D network. However, space in 2D is limited. So what we can do is increase the 2D space, or make it more efficient, or reduce the things in a 2D space. Or we could question the 2D space all in all. And this is what Elon did. He asked a simple question, why do we have 3D buildings in our cities to use space more efficiently, but for the most part only 2D traffic networks? Why is there only one level here and not say 40 levels? Now you might say we could go up as well, right? Well, Elon himself and the borrowing company on its website explain why going up doesn't really make sense. I think the best argument here is that people would probably not feel very comfortable having heavy vehicles hovering or flying over them. And then there's also the weather and the noise issue. Going down, however, is quiet, it's practically invisible and weatherproof. Besides, the deepest mines are much deeper than the tallest buildings. The Burj Khalifa is only 830 meters high, 
while the deepest gold mine in South Africa is four kilometers deep. Now that we have shifted our perspective, you might ask, this solution is so simple, why haven't we done it before? What's the catch? This leads us to the third part of Elon's innovation path, perfect timing. Similar to rockets in the aerospace industry and electric drivetrain and battery technology in the automotive industry, boring tunnels is still crazy expensive. In the United States, there is virtually no investment in tunneling research and development. The construction industry in general is one of the only industries in the economy that has not improved its productivity in the last 50 years. A modern soft soil tunnel boring machine is 14 times slower than a snail, while a one mile tunnel can cost up to 1 billion US dollars. And today's tunnel boring projects like this one in Seattle often come with a whole set of problems, delays and cost overruns. Again, this reminds us a lot of the characteristics of rockets and electric cars before Elon worked on them. But how can he be so confident that he can lower the costs? Well, I mean, besides knowing that you are already successfully innovating at least two other industries, which might also give you a little bit of a confidence boost, I think one substantial part of the answer to this is that the tunnel boring industry is on the verge of change, driven by technological advances in robotics, AI, electric engines, material technology, the list goes on. However, as described above, the incumbents in the industry are just too complacent and successful to implement these new disruptive technologies or to rethink their products and approaches, just like in the automotive industry before Tesla stepped in. For example, the tunnel boring industry has seen major demand growth in the last decades due to increasing urbanization. Herrenknecht, one of the world's biggest players in the industry, is now providing machines for as many as 100 projects annually, up from only 20 some 15 years ago. So tunnel boring companies have had great decades and years and therefore no actual need to reduce costs or to work on disruptive innovations and to rethink what they do. But I think the main answer is even something else, which leads us to the fourth part of Elon's innovation scheme. Vision. While this might sound very cheesy, you cannot deny that Elon Musk is very much known for leading with vision. He oftentimes explained in interviews that his passion to work on sustainable energy and space travel all stem from trying to work on things that will eventually lead to a better future. He once famously said, if something is important enough, even if the odds are against you, you should still do it. And when you think of it, this whole idea about a 3D network of tunnels and cities, just like interplanetary civilizations, electric cars and hyperloops, is straight up out of science fiction. And it's this futuristic taste to it that also makes the whole thing very attractive and inspiring, especially to young people. And as I already explained in one of my other videos, several studies show that purpose-driven companies are outperforming firms that mainly focus on profit maximization or competitive advantage, as they inspire their employees and customers. So purpose is not a frothy concept. It really is a major factor for success. So all in all, this whole scheme of Elon Musk becomes so successful because it cares for important unmet needs. It approaches problems and entire industries from a different perspective. And it envisions a better, exciting and inspiring future and therefore creates agency and aspiration for change and innovation. And all of that is then directed at a complacent industry that has lost its purpose and vision, eventually transforming boring into something interesting. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos and hit the like button. Thanks so much.